By now, just about everyone is familiar with First Fridays, the phenomenon down in the Crossroads Art District that I believe you may have attended a time or two. I may have. And it's so popular, they're now doing Third Fridays. Yeah, all over the metro. Seems like there's a resurgence of interest in art, and perhaps no place more intriguing than downtown Kansas City, thanks to the Urban Culture Project. A group that's homegrown who works to support and encourage local art and artists. The idea behind Urban Culture Project being how do you support artists and at the same time be supporting uh, urban revitalization? Could we get some um, no-cost leases, low-cost leases for spaces that were sitting empty, take over those spaces and provide space for artists to have studios in a non-commercial um, sort of situation? I was awarded a studio in 2005 and it was a great opportunity for me at the time and it was instrumental in my uh, artistic growth. They give you opportunities to just get in there and like create and experiment and like take chances, take risks and not have to worry about what is the outcome going to be. It's been fun working in a space with other people and seeing what they do. It really changes your work. While the mission of the UCP is to provide artists with free studio space, Another is to provide viable exhibition and performance spaces as well. Can you give me a sense of the atmosphere, the feeling that anybody would get when they're walking into one of your flagship places, like Paragraph? What will they expect when they walk into the door? Well, I think we kind of want people not to know what to expect in some cases, and that there's a real sense from month to month that things are different, and it's not predictable, and it's trying to I think activate the spaces continually in different interesting ways and cross-pollinate audiences. So having some performance going on within the context of a visual art exhibition, you hope that you're getting the performance audience and you're getting the visual art audience and that there's some mix um, and potential collaboration that grows out of that. Along with Paragraph, the UCP has another signature gallery located on Southwest Boulevard, La Esquina. The exhibition that we're in now is an exhibition that I curated, um, which I haven't <laughs> had the opportunity to do very often, but that's a way to contextualize the work of a bunch of different artists. And with this show, we've included both artists out of town as well as Kansas City artists, because while we're really about supporting artists in Kansas City, one of the ways that we think we do that is by drawing relationships with artists from other places too who are their peers and start developing some of those kinds of relationships and exchange opportunities. We have an ongoing open call for proposals from artists. So any artist can send a proposal and say, I want to do an exhibition, I want to curate an exhibition, I want to do a performance. And then the committee um, reviews those proposals. And then we decide, you know, this is interesting and we want to move forward with it and how do we make it work. Um, so it's, we, we really try to be very artist driven. The Urban Culture Project is just one of many initiatives of the Charlotte Street Foundation. Charlotte Street began when founder David Hughes spotted what he felt was a disconnect in the Kansas City arts community. It seemed to me a lot of support was going to the, to the organizations and no support was going really to the grassroots community. And there was no connectivity between the arts community and corporations, foundations, civic elite, if you will. So I thought it'd just be interesting to get a little money to, um, to the artists, get some recognition, uh, support, and try to form one bridge between kind of the civic leaders and the arts community. The one particular artist, John Pushak, for whom Charlotte Street was named, lived on Charlotte Street in Midtown Kansas City, and it was called the Charlotte Street Mission because it was basically a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week revolving door of artists, food people, hangers-on like me, musicians, and he fed everybody spiritually and belly-wise. He was an artist and he sold his work. When he'd sell his work, he'd turn the money over to somebody for a bottle of champagne and one of the most generous people I, I ever knew. And he died in 2005 of cancer, but uh, back in 1997, we wanted to salute him and honor his sense of community. So I raised a little money from my employer at the time, American Century Investments, uh, a grand whopping $10,000, and we gave away 
four awards that first year. And um, it's been 65 artists later, almost $400,000 to these individuals. Well, it does help financially since I have uh, children and, and family. And uh, it just helps me put some money aside to pursue my artistic goals. I, I mean, I would say basically that Charlotte Street's vision for Kansas City is to become a magnet for artists and arts professionals. We want to cultivate artists here. We want them to move here from uh, Chicago, St. Louis, Omaha, Topeka, to make this a, a, a bigger, better, stronger community of artists. And Charlotte Street's role in that is in different ways, trying to find ways to stoke that community of artists. Financially, you know, psychologically, to lend support, credence, validation, recognition to what they're doing. Arts don't necessarily come from elsewhere. It's being made right here on a high level. And one thing I would really like to say is that in my now extensive uh, studio visits and helping to give out these awards from Charlotte Street Foundation, I'm very impressed by the quality of work that's um, being made in Kansas City. And I think that work should be acclaimed here, but also should have a much wider audience elsewhere, and I think Charlotte Street Foundation is also fostering that kind of thing.